Hello there, we are the Huge Movie Fanatics with another Christmas-themed horror movie, and we are going to be reviewing Silent Night, Deadly Night, which uh, is about a uh, killer Santa, for want of a better uh, uh, description. description summary of the movie. Um, the movie, I sort of have sort of mixed feelings on, like, I think for the movie of its time, it kind of worked, like, because all those movies sort of in that time period were knockoffs of Halloween to some extent, or... Friday the 13th, and uh, I mean it very much is, you can look at it through that prism and it's very not good, like, as just a knockoff of those, but what the film does have is a really strong atmosphere of the Christmas times. I did like the killer in it, um, which, uh, like some of the 80s horror, a lot of the 80s and uh, horror movies, I'm not crazy about the villainous, uh, Character. There were so many, the, so many in that decade that it's like, yeah, you know, like, tried everything. Yeah, and almost all of them, I can like count on one hand how many of them were successful uh, in my eyes as being like good cinematic villains. Um, but I actually kind of like this one, um, and I like the whole uh, 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 Christian themes that were brought into it from the beginning of the movie with the nuns and stuff like that. Yeah. Like, it was kind of interesting. Uh, like, the movie is very kind of in your face, uh, probably needlessly so. Um, and but it does have like imagery that stuck with me, like the the antlers thing. Oh yes, uh, that's pretty probably one of the greatest kills ever. Um, uh, clearly, kind of ripping off Texas Chainsaw Massacre, but whatever. Um, uh, I. Uh, I don't know, I, I'm, as I say, I'm kind of conflicted with it, so I'm going to give it two stars. Like, uh, there, there is stuff that, uh, to like about it. It is relatively well made, uh, it has strong atmosphere. It's not necessarily a movie I'd be willing to watch repeatedly, but uh, there is worth and value in it at the end of the day. Uh, so that's my take. What is your take? <laughs> well, I saw this movie probably when I was 13. You know, like I say, me and my dad probably around the same time as seeing Christmas Evil, and me and my dad maybe around this time of year. I imagine we'd probably go to the video store back when there were video stores, <laughs> <laughs> and uh, you know, go in the horror section and see what had a Santa outfit on it or anything you know like that. And this was probably one of the first ones Christmas horror that I seen, and and for me, it's it's. In a lot of ways, the most purest, simplest Christmas horror movie there yeah. is. Um, it's it's so like you said, in your face, straightforward. This is what's going on, and this is why. And that the simplicity, the simplicity of it is, I think, is genius in a lot yeah. of ways. Just you know, the kid sees his you know parents get killed by a crook who's dressed up as Santa. It traumatizes him, and then further traumatization that he he gets in the you know the the. The nun house, the or what, boarding school, the or boarding school uh, further traumatizes him until you know when he's older in their early twenties or late teens or something like that. One you know Christmas Eve or whatever he gets on, they actually oh that's another thing they put him in the, at some store they put him in a Santa costume. So all these things, which is actually very realistic if you think about it, and I got to give the movie props for being it's 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 portrayed very over the topish in the movie, which I love. But under that over the topish. I think it's very realistic in that how it's it, very it, layered his progression. Yeah, to oh, and very, I think it's very realistic. Yeah, and like I, very I, plausible actually. And if it doesn't happen, I'm going to do it just to show you how plausible <laughs> it is. And I, I think that is very cool. And and it's kind of like other movies too, where it's it's so. Um, I think it was done really well in, in Star Wars Episode Three, where you you totally understand the transition and totally yeah. understand how a transition can be made from good or just benign to so evil. And it's, yeah. I think that the facts are so well put there that makes it completely understandable where you might just think about, the, uh, think about the idea and go, yeah, right. Well, they show it to you, like you say, in such great layers that it's like by the time he, he gets up you know, with yeah. that face with his Christmas hat and his outfit on, it's like, oh yeah, I totally understand why he's yeah. doing that. The movie's got like, I think, three pairs of breasts Fantastic. Uh, some of them are nothing to speak about, and like two of the other pair are. One of them's not even not even real. Enhanced by you know <laughs> means, and um, there's a scream queen who I think it's Linnea Quigley is the one who gets impaled on the the antlers. A famous scene, you know, a favorite of mine when I was a you know, teenager. Um, it, I just I love I love it, and actually this movie was a huge. Uh, among whatever parents groups or who oh, yeah, it was, it was, it was banned. It, it was, was so it was, yeah, yeah. Hated. 
it was so hated and 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 when it came out and I'm, I'm so Cisco and Eber like I think had special about it <laughs> where they, they were like look at what cinemas come to this is awful which of course you know is like <laughs> like five years before that they're like the last house on the left was masterpiece <laughs> there's nothing as bad as last house on the yeah. left so, somehow if you put the Coca Cola Icon Santa Claus imagery with an axe, like you know, you're you're you know, you're Satan yeah. himself. So uh, I'm I'm just grateful and really grateful that the movie survived all that crap and that it didn't get completely burned and thrown away by by Christian, you know, religious uh, relig religious people and and all this and that. I'm glad it survived. Um, normally, when we do a movie that's got a sequels, we we do kind of very compulsively all the movies that, that sequels that came with it. But there's no point. All the sequels to Silent Light, Deadly Night are so atrocious that they're this, this so is no bad. Point. They're 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 knockoffs of the first movie, but they're so bad. Like it was as if I I can't even describe. Each, them. Yeah, like, I know that's just and it. they get so, worse. Like there's no oh God. getting better. I mean, two better. is two is just beyond awful. Three is is you know just it's I like just what you thought three. they couldn't get any worse. Yeah. Well, th four and five have nothing to do with oh, like yeah. the okay. Billy the kid. The, the the only thing that's good about two and three is at least. They got like the brother. The chronology. Yeah, yeah, and then two, and four and, and four and five are just like using the name, you know, like yeah. Kind of they were about a little girl, right? I don't know. I can't remember. <laughs> I can't remember. But uh, but yeah, so that's all we're gonna say about the sequels to Silent Night, Deadly Night. I, I just love the ironicness behind it. Like the kids go, the bullies going sledding, and he kicks the kids off the hill, and they go down the. The hill and he's like punish and decapitates the you know there's some awesome kills in there decapitates the sledder as he's going down the hill and there's um it's very actually uh graphic and there's uh on, on vhs it came out like in an unrated uh format which probably wasn't seen in the theaters um which you know i think was pretty much the only vhs tape available which you know it's got some really cool kills so the guy gets his head cut off and you see the body come down at the bottom of the hill with no head mm -hmm. and then the head comes bouncing down brilliant you know and I guess that's all I really have to say the only problem I think that the movie strengths are like the beginning the middle and I kind of think you know the, the last third of it gets that's, a little weak that's where what I didn't I, I'm not a fan of the unkillable killer like uh, I mean it works if you're a ghost like Freddy or something like that but I, I just can't stand unkillable killers and he's not unkillable like he just sort of seemed to <laughs> like Take all the punishment with that. Oh, yeah. like I mean that that just bugs me. Well, so. they shot him. They shot him at the end, and he's dead. Right. So I don't maybe guess, but I don't know. <laughs> That's that would kind of bug me the last like half hour of the movie or so. Yeah, it was the last fifteen minutes or something. It seemed to it seemed to set up really well and do all this stuff, and then it kind of just like kind of wrapped up very abruptly. So what was your star rating on it? I think oh I didn't say that yet. I'd say three. Okay. I I think this movie's got you know enough breasts and enough competence. To, I'm sounding like Joe Bob Briggs here. I'm not Joe Bob Briggs, I swear. This is my face. I'm not wearing a mask. Um, it's got, like I say, it's got enough confidence in, in the writing into all the layers and stuff like that. Three stars. Great. This is like one of the most iconic uh, Christmas horror movies there is. So if you haven't checked it out, check out Silent Night, Deadly Night. Um, there you go. There you have it. Merry Christmas. Ho, Enjoy. ho, 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 punish! <laughs>